Hello and welcome back to the stars everybody, welcome back to Starfield. Today we're going to be taking a look at the old earth hunting rifle, one of the few old earth weapons. This is one of the very first sniper type weapons that you can get, it's more of a DMR, designated marksman's rifle, and it works really really well in that role. You can get this one somewhat early on, you might get it about the same time that you're getting the lawgiver. It depends. And honestly, I think this one is a lot better than the lawgiver in a lot of ways. We're going to be talking about those. So for base stats of the old earth hunting rifle, which I'm just going to refer to as the Vinteres now because that's what it looks like to me. So the Vinteres has 30 damage on it base, which is pretty good. That's decent damage per shot. It's not the highest, especially for like a sniper rifle, but with the fast follow-up shots from this, that's not necessarily a bad thing. This is the only weapon that fires the 9x39 round. So similar to the AK, this one doesn't really have any competition with it, so it's always going to be relevant for a rifles build if you're going with rifles. Even if you just want something for longer range, this one's still going to be pretty decent for that. And this one holds 20 rounds in it, which is a lot for a sniper rifle or again a DMR rifle. This one has a higher rate of fire at 40, which is pretty great. Makes so you can do quick follow-up shots with this, and this gun doesn't have too much recoil, so it's not really that hard to spam this at enemies. This one has 100 meters of effective range, which is extremely far. Makes it so that the effective range of this rifle is basically anything that's practical. You can actually even extend it further than this with mods, but I honestly don't think that it's necessary. Most of the time you're not going to be taking shots at over 100 meters. You, uh, you can if you would like, but a lot of the times that's really not necessary. And this one has very high accuracy, and this one weighs 3.15, so it's not super heavy either. These guns also sell for a decent amount, so if you want to pick them up, then you'll actually be getting a decent amount of money. They are a little bit rare, but not one of the most rare weapons. They're about as rare as an AK, the old Earth uh, Assault Rifle. So for pros of this weapon, we've got quite a few. This one has good damage per shot. It has high damage per second because you can fire it so quickly. It has extremely long range. It has very high accuracy. It also has good mods already put on it by default since it has a suppressor and it has a scope on it, which is fantastic. It has a lot going for it in terms of pros. The cons are that it just might be difficult to find ammo. That's about the only major con to this one. Ammo, you might have to buy from vendors and it can be a little bit pricey, although vendors tend to have a decent amount of this and you don't always need to buy a whole lot of it because if you're using this as a designated marksman's rifle, you might not be shooting it all that often. You might just be using it to pick off enemies at a distance or to pick off turrets and maybe snipe at other enemies to engage fights or at the very end of fights when enemies are trying to run away. The other con is that it doesn't necessarily have the most amount of mods that you could put on this with it only having three mods that you can actually place on this. So it is one of the lesser ones. However, like I said, it already has two mods basically installed on it with a suppressor and a scope and those are two of the best ones. So mods, um, I guess it depends, you don't have that many options to put on it, but the options you do get are pretty good. Recently on my rifle tier list, I put the old earth hunting rifle into B tier, and honestly I think I might have understalled it a little bit. Even the base old earth hunting rifle, if you have perks, is probably up into A tier. I think it actually belongs there. If you don't have any perks, then yeah, probably B tier is fine because this one definitely benefits from a lot of perks because it specializes in so many things. Some of the perks you can have with this would be increasing rifle damage, increasing ballistic damage, increasing stealth to get more damage from having a suppressor on this, sniper because this has a scope on it so you can get more damage from that, and then you could also put on like armor breaking which is just going to be a passive bonus, and the uh, marksman skill too because this is a semi-auto rifle. So if you have all of those perks on top of this, this one actually gets pretty crazy, and that's why I would say it's probably like A tier if you have all of those. If you don't, then yeah, probably B tier is fair for it. Let's talk about a modded version and where I would put that on the tier list, and also what I'd put on this. So as I said before, we don't have a whole lot of mods to pick from. Starting up, we have a laser, which you can either have no laser or a laser. Laser gives you more accuracy, you might as well throw it on if you have it. If not, you're not going to notice a huge difference. For magazines, you only have two options besides the standard magazine. That being a small magazine, which lowers your ammo, which isn't a huge deal. It drops it from 20 to 12, which is still a lot for a sniper rifle. And the other option is armor piercing rounds. I would say just go with armor piercing rounds, unless you just want to make the rifle as lightweight as possible. Maybe you get a titanium build of this and you want to make it super light. You could do that, but armor piercing rounds will just get you more consistent damage towards all enemies. So that, that's pretty nice to have and that's what I put into mine. And then for an internal, we have three options, either hair trigger, high powered, or high velocity. All of these are actually pretty decent. You don't really need high velocity. That increases your range and you already have a ton of range unless you really want to be trying to snipe enemies at a really far distance because I think this takes it to like 148 or something like that or maybe it's just 140. High powered gets you the most amount of damage per shot which can be useful. I went with hair trigger though because this increases your rate of fire quite a bit and this weapon is surprisingly good at close range too. 
Even though it's more of a sniper weapon or a DMR where it functions better at long to medium range, at close range it can still do a lot of damage because of how fast you can fire this. And it has a 20 round magazine in it by default, that's usually enough to get you out of any sort of bad situation when things just climb right on top of you. And with all of this on top of the rifle, I'd actually move this up a tier from A tier to S tier. Assuming you have all the perks and you have these mods on there, this weapon is fantastic. It actually does really well against everything. It's also the only gun that fires the 9x39, so you're probably going to have a decent amount of this ammunition laying around if you're already not using the rifle. So whenever you do use the rifle, you're don't really have to worry about the ammo situation. There is two unique versions of the Old Earth Hunting Rifle 2. One of these you can get from a quest, one of these you can just buy. We'll talk about the buying one first, and then we'll talk about the quest one later. First one that you can buy is called the Speechless Fire. This one is available in Hopetown. You just have to go to the vendor there, and he's got this weapon, and this weapon is quite good, because this weapon already has all the mods that I really like on it, plus it has a bonus to it. For a legendary effect, this one has the ability to light enemies on fire, so it has a percent chance of triggering this. And I'm not sure exactly what the percentage is, it might be 5% similar to lasers, but it does happen fairly often with this, and it gets you just more passive damage onto the enemy. That's pretty good. On top of that, its mods are already the laser sight, the AP rounds, and the hair trigger, the, all the ones that I had already put on my rifle, so it's already built the way I like, but it comes with a bonus. That's pretty nice, assuming that you don't find one of these with additional legendary effects. This one is fantastic and you might as well get it. You can also get it fairly early on because if you're doing like the ranger quest, you're probably going to go to Hopetown pretty early and it's not going to be a bad option to pick up in the early game or if you're on New Game Plus, it's going to be a fantastic option because you might get the advanced version of it. There is one other unique Venturez and that is called the Despondent Assassin. You do get this one from completing a quest and this one is a legendary weapon that has three effects on it where it's got demoralizing hitman and anti-personnel rounds. Those can be pretty decent. Demoralizing, I don't really care for that much because it just ma basically makes it so enemies might flee from you, which is okay. It doesn't come up that often. Usually I just shoot an enemy until they're dead. The Hitman is fantastic too. This just gives you 15% more damage when aiming. You're already going to get a bonus if you went with a sniper perk so that you could aim down sights and you get more damage when doing that. You get even more damage with Hitman on top of that. That's fantastic. A lot of the time you're probably going to be using the sights for this, assuming enemies aren't moving right up and then you start spam firing this. And it does have anti-personnel rounds in it, which gets it 10% more damage towards humans, which most of the time, at least if you're doing quests, you're probably going to be fighting humans. And that's just a passive bonus to it. So this one's really good. This one also has two mods on it already with the small magazine and the high powered. Small magazine is fine if you want to use it as a sniper rifle. Like I said, you only go from 20 rounds to 12 rounds, so it's not a huge nerf to the ammo, and you can ADS quicker with this, which is kind of nice. And the high powered gets you more damage per shot, so this is built more for like a sniper roll. You could of course throw a laser on this, and then you'd have a fully modded weapon, and I don't even think you need to have weapon upgrades or weapon mod upgrades for this. So that brings us to the question, should you use the old earth hunting rifle? I would say yeah. If you're going with a sniper build, if you're going with a sneaking build, if you're going with a rifle build, it's always going to be a really good option to pick any of those. If you're going with all of those, then it's an even better option. About the only time that you might want to avoid this weapon is either if you can't find it or if your specific build is running like a handguns only build or a heavy weapons only build or something like that where you're not specced into using rifles or using silent weapons in any sort of way. Tell me your thoughts on the Old Earth hunting rifle down in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll talk to you next time. Bye bye.